AM 970 WSTX. Good morning, good morning, good morning. WSTX AM 970, your community-minded station. Yes, we're on Reflections. We're talking about looking in the community mirror. If you like what you see, fine. If you don't like what you see, jump in and make a difference. So I want to say good morning, uh, St. Thomas, St. John, Water Island. But more important, I want to say good morning, Frederickstead. We're in Frederickstead today, and we've got a good lineup here for you today. Starting off, I've got uh, Ariella here as my co-host. Good morning, everybody. And uh, yes, yeah, it's a, a wonderful, beautiful day in Frederickstead. You hear the car going by. And I know you're wondering, well, where are you in Frederickstead? Frederickstead is such a big place. I mean, it just dwarfs New York City. Okay, all right. Okay. So where are we in Frederickstead? We are at the wonderful, beautiful, nicely laid out Sibone. All right. I was in here last Saturday, and Roy Davis and uh, Mr. Carrington, people known as the Commissioner of Department of Licensed Consumer Affairs, Devin, was in here on the bass, and Roy was on the piano. It was wonderful music. The, the, uh, I wish I could say the wine was good. I didn't have one. <laughs> oh, yes, I was a designated driver, and um, the food was great. But we're going to talk more about Sydney, and we're going to introduce the, the owners and maybe a few other people that work here and make it something cool about the place. But right now, we have with us Mr. Ed Ben Goa. The president of the Chamber of Commerce. Right? We're so happy to have you here with us in Frederickstead. We're so happy to have you here on WSTX. And of course, I go do my own club. So glad to have you here on Reflections. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning, Doug. Good morning, Ariella. Thank you for having us here uh, today. Um, like Doug mentioned, um, I'm the new president of the Singapore Chamber of Commerce. And it is a beautiful day here in the island of St. Croix in Frederickstead. It's been uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been down in Frederickstead early in the morning. And looking out at the uh, the ocean and the dock, oh man, it was eye breath, what do, you, what do you call it, breathtaking view. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah, we have so much to be thankful for. We have so much beauty in this place. And, and we're happy to be able to highlight it, expose it, and likewise, Business in Frederickstead, I want to say it's booming. It's moving. And if every time you come to Frederickstead, if you come every week or every other week, chances are you will see a new sign. Yes. Not replacing an old sign. A new sign. The business is popping here in yeah. Frederickstead. You go all the way up there to the Fred and what was uh, Turtles Deli. Deli. Yeah. Come all the way down and you see the transformation and things. You see the people walking and enjoying the the uh, waterfront, but you notice that hey, it's new and different people. Exactly. Because if you hang out down there, you will see. There's certain people you want to see. You want to see there. Yeah, but it's a lot of new and different people. Well, I know the chamber just had their, their big breakfast a couple of weeks ago. All right. And yeah. Various initiatives on the way in terms of things that the, the chamber generally does and of course you're part of the vanguard of, of making sure that the, the government is, is truly being the partner that it needs it to needs be to, to, to promote business. And I'm glad you use that word partner because that's in essence what us as a business community have to reflect on with the government, that we're partners. And the government needs to realize that without business there's no government. Well I think I think for the most part they do. And, and I say that, you know, it's that it's that time of, of year again, no, not Christmas, <laughs> the November time. <laughs> and uh, one of the challenges is to make sure that folks have an understanding of business. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, the syntax, which I, I know you can talk a little bit about that, but before the syntax, we had the... the uh, the tech park and the the uh, all of the, yeah, the benefits part, that right? were given to the companies there, several companies there that basically gutted a lot of revenue, and then they turn around, and come back with the syntax and try and make it up. Make it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, yeah. it's 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 a constant battle. Yeah. Um, 
But yo, you know, we understand government is a business oh, yeah, and they yeah. need to generate funds. And there's different ways to generate funds than versus just going and say, okay, we're going to add syntax. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, in conjunction with St. Thomas Chamber of Commerce, fought that very, very hard. Meetings after meetings. Uh, there was even something published that we were doing backdoor negotiations with the governor. Um, and that came out publicly. It was like, no, it, it, it wasn't a closed session. You know, obviously the public was not invited, but anybody was there, was there. And there was a bunch of senators there, uh, some businesses, and the governor and his, uh, some of his delegations. But we fought so hard that we were able to reduce from what they were asking for, the 100%. We got it down to 47%. So, you know, they reduced it 53%. So just imagine, um, I was somewhere the other day, and uh, I don't drink beer, but somebody ordered a Heineken, and it was $6, and I'm like, Jesus, yes. $6 for a drink. You mean You know? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I remember that thing was like two fifty. dollars Now I'm going to look up for you. Yeah, I was like, man, the same tax really hurt a lot of people. Four. Four? Yeah. Okay. You know, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. So. But it's a, it's, it's a partnership that, you know, the, the business community in, in conjunction with the chamber, we're, we're trying to help the government. Uh, we know the government is a cash crunch. We know that. And they need revenues. But there's certain things that you just can't tax. The syntax is very hurtful. And it's shown zero sign of income for the government. Has actually been a revenue loss for the government. And if you're going to drink a beer, instead of drinking five or six beers like you normally do, well, you know, I'm going to drink one or two beers. So that's one thing that it's hurting some the system. And uh, one, one of the uh, other things, too, is no longer duty free. If, if you look at it in reference to the four, you know, Come here, buy a carton of cigarettes for twenty bucks. Now the carton of cigarettes is forty bucks. So when people come off the cruise ships, they're not going to buy it here. They're going to go and buy it in the same market. Yes, it's probably, that's, you know. that's always been a challenge mm -hmm. to the extent that I uh, know the cigarettes for sure that uh, there was a fierce competition, and we basically ceded to in, in terms of what we've done. And there's a fine balance, as you're saying, between revenue generation and pressing business. Right. And that's that's the balance. And um, now I, I wanted to go back to what you said a little bit ago about the conversation because as far as I'm concerned, it's everybody's job to have a conversation, whether with the governor or their senators or so forth and so on. If you don't tell them what's on your mind, mm -hmm. are they gonna know? Are they gonna know? Okay. And uh, it, it was really funny because if you sit down any place for five minutes and another senator walks in, and uh, uh, some other public official, then the, the papers want to say that somehow or the other you're having a public meeting in right. private. And that's not what it's about, folks. Everybody talks when they get a chance to talk. Uh, and then, of course, the formal time for action is when it's in the legislative session or the government has something to sign off or something that is initiated by way of uh, proclamation or, or uh, executive order, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, the chamber in that context is doing its job. And I say to anybody who has any criticism there, you know, we all have to do our job and tell people, the people that we elect or otherwise that they appoint, tell them what it is we need. You got to talk to them, right? Um, so at the, at the breakfast, were there any uh, special highlights that came out at the, at the breakfast that you had the other day? There was a few highlights that came out. Um, some of the highlights was the achievements that uh, her former president, Kevin McCollum, did um, to the chamber, which was the syntax was pr probably one of her biggest um, items for last year. Uh, I don't remember the exact totals of ribbon cuttings for new businesses that we did for last year, but uh, we did quite a few. Uh, we did. Um, but nine business after hours. And there was some enlightenment through all that. Um, the congregation that, uh, that 
the chamber also participated in. They went to uh, China with the government mm -hmm. and doing negotiations uh, in Sinopec for some sort of purchase or some sort of uh, agreement between the refinery here and Lime Tree. So, you know, the chamber has been involved behind the scene in a lot of these stuff. Uh, obviously, like in most businesses and stuff, negotiations, you know, we have agreements. Uh, we can't talk about a lot of this stuff. Yeah, no, no, um, but, you know, we, we do see some of the progress that is forthcoming to the Alan Singh Corps in the Virgin Islands. Um, and it's very promising. I'm going to throw out a, a, a challenge to you, a WSDX challenge, because you just said that they had nine business after hours. Okay? I want you to make sure that WSDX is on your public relations list of people, for everything you've got going on. Mm -hmm. Good, and, and, and that's what we need. You know, let her, her communications lady, Cassandra Dunn, because she's the one that puts out all the press release, let her know you guys are on board. Okay. Because the more publicity that we give a new business, you know, it's it's a plus plus for everybody. It's a win. Uh, like, for instance, C18, I'm, honestly, I've never heard of this place. I've been in St. Croix for 24 years. And I love this. You know I mean? I love the stone walls, I like to call it a little hole in one because it reminds me of this little place I used to go to Atlanta and it's great, I love it. Yeah, well there's been a transformation going on here in Fredericton and, and uh, Ariella, you could talk to that, you know, Ariella, you got to be careful with this silly and serious guy, he don't want to you don't want to Mr. Bingo. Not me. No, I ain't said Mr. Bingo. I don't know what to do. I can run my mouth to the but, uh, <laughs> I used to be on the radio too. I have my own radio show. Okay, all right. Good to know. Good to know. Um, yeah, but um, I, I remember that uh, businesses in this area have changed. There, there's some new businesses now and some businesses that have remained. So in, in that sense, um, Sibone, relatively speaking, is one of the, one of, to me, one of the newer businesses um, and what I really like about it in terms of the, the character of Fredericksted, it was all the focus on the waterfront and I'm saying hey, King Street got something to offer too yeah, and I'm glad to see it up, sprouting up, sprouting up, sprouting up and things happen. The government offices that you have here uh, generally are well kept uh, in terms of eating out, eating out here, uh, filling up the road and you have some others. Um, but it's really a step forward and a step up. And in, in that context, I want to say thank you to my good friend, Virginia Wilder Claremont, okay? okay? Virginia Wilder, yes, we're not romancing the stone today. You are at home nursing that body of yours back into health because Mother Nature kept you from me today. Yeah, All right. Well, 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 this morning. Hope you feel better. All yeah. right, definitely, definitely. So, uh, Virginia, thanks to, to your efforts. And I want to big up in particular because of the Clean Sweep Fredericksted initiative that she got mm -hmm. going, that got people out here and cleaning up, making sure that the place stayed uh, wonderful, beautiful to drive through. And every now and then we have, we backslide. Every now and then we have a function or something and it will clean up quickly enough or whatever the case may be. Um, and she's on it. She's on it in, in, in that sense. Whether it's to uh, cuss out some people on Facebook, no, I'm not going to cuss out people on Facebook. No, 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 no. I just joke when I say that. But she's on it. You go mess with Frederick said you mess in with Virginia. I really want to big her up in, in her efforts. But more so, I want to big up the public that has stepped forward in the volunteer realm. Because Clean Sweep is not a business. Clean no. Sweep is a community movement. That's right. And, and it's all about that. Gathering people together in good faith to take care of Frederick's head. So, all right, Virginia. I, I know for sure that um, the chamber participated in one of the clean sweeps. Uh, I believe it was last year with the effort of um, one of the schools, mm -hmm. and they painted some murals or something back here. Yes. With yes. Um, uh, Sandra Hardy, mm -hmm. who's uh, the uh, uh, chair of the education board. So. That particular day, I was off island. Um, we 
my business that I do, and especially now with the chamber, do a lot of traffic. Uh, so I can't really attend a lot of these functions that I want to. But one thing I do is I do volunteer and I help out in the community as much as possible. Um, well, the, the key thing is the, the, to be the places that you can and be there in good faith and continue the effort you know, as far as the chamber is concerned. But I want to um, digress a little bit, okay? Because I got, I got your business card here. And I see the paper that your president was air conditioning refrigeration. Yes. How many years you guys been here? Because as far as I'm concerned, you go know, like a granite stone in. I've been here for the time that right. dinosaurs. <laughs> well, the Ben Gord name has been in the Virgin Islands since 1972. My father moved us to St. Thomas. Um, I was originally born in the Dominican Republic, moved to Puerto Rico. We lived a short while, which was approximately, I would say, about a year, year and a half. And then my dad got a job with DEFCON in St. Thomas. DEFCON is a concrete and uh, decorious stuff. Um, two several contracts and stuff my father had started progressing to go as electric motors in St. Thomas. Uh, as I grew older, I uh, went to Atlanta for college. Uh, I'm actually a computer engineer. And uh, the thing with computer engineering is you're designing stuff, designing programs. And I loved it because I was never in one place too long. And I traveled the entire state of Georgia, Alabama, uh, the upper part of the uh, peninsula of Florida. And um, when I got burned out, make this long story short, um, there was an opportunity to move closer to home, home of St. Thomas, obviously. And I was like, you know something, I would like to move closer to home. And St. Croix was it. And um, to be honest with you, when I moved here 24 years ago, I hated St. Croix with a passion. St. Croix was born, it was dead. But remember, I came from Atlanta. Yeah, hot so Atlanta. Exactly, you know, it, it, it's, exactly. It's a party. Yeah, you know, I understand the context. Yeah, you know, it's it's a party town, and it's like when I came here from Washington D.C. Yeah. I mean, everything just went like it, it's, it's a halt. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, oh, yeah. and, and when you go someplace to uh, like a fast food to order a combo, it takes you fifteen minutes to get a combo. You're like, wow. When you're up there, you know, you could have forty people in front of you. You get your combo in two minutes. So. But you know, is, is once you get readjusted to that, no problem, man. Take you your know, time. Take your time. Um, you start to appreciate. Mm -hmm. Within six months, I'm like, you know something? I think I made the right decision to move to St. Croix. Yeah. And then I looked at the island and I said, in approximately 15 to 18 years from now, this island is going to explode. And it was just starting to explode. Recession of 2008 2009 hit, mm -hmm. and then that put another halt to St. Croix, even to the Virgin Islands. And now I'm seeing it picking back up. Uh, you gotta remember the two storms that we just had. It's an influx of money, and it's definitely a boost to this economy. However, we gotta look at it as this is, I like to say, that real money. Because with FEMA cuts out and all the insurance things are paid, we're talking about sustainability. Yeah. It's like energy. It's yeah. Like yeah. The influx of energy that comes with money mm -hmm. and people, and um, you, so many people are interested in the island and here and loving it. Well, let me tell you, I was driving down here this morning and I was thinking along the same lines because you're. you're it, it's kind of like when they leave, what's going to be fueling the economy? And that's what our focus has to be. Right. To get to that sustainability so that they leave and we don't see the difference, so to speak, because things keep right so on right moving, on moving and then pick up and, and grow from mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. When I was in Washington, D.C., uh, I, I drove in Washington, D.C., and you have to have a, 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 a certain nerve and, and a preoccupation in what you're doing when you drive right. in Washington, D.C., on the parkway and everything else. 
uh, when I came back home and went through that slow down and everything, now I go to Washington, D.C., I don't even want to touch That's a steering wheel. Right. Give me a taxi, give me the bus, give me the train. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. I love this life. And mm -hmm. just, just like you, you went through that transition, and uh, I, I love this life. And in that sense, um, I'm like holding down the fort in terms of all my siblings are away. You know, they, they work and jobs mm -hmm. take them uh, all over the world. And uh, when I tell them, I'll come and visit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. my, my dad went to visit one of the, you know, my sister up in New York during Christmas. My dad is seven, seven years old, seven years old now. He was like, he got stuck now in bed because of the cold weather, mm -hmm. all his bones and stuff ache. He came out the airplane because he's not in the same groin. If I want to say that, he's not in the same groin. He came out with a wheelchair. And he spent two days with me. And the next morning, you know, he gets up. He just has his walking stick, his cane. Uh, he's like, man, I feel much better now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so right. he says, you ain't catching me, you're going back to the coal again. So <laughs> come, come to St. Croix with his yeah. healing properties yeah. and, and uh, rejuvenation. Yeah. And I wish he had more time you know, to take him to the beach you know, and, mm. and stuff. But this is a, a, a very demanding position for the chamber. And I want the listening audience and their uh, viewing audience to know that the St. Croix Chamber of Commerce is run by volunteers. You know, we don't get paid for this. Occasionally, if I have a meeting, a lunch meeting with someone, you pay for lunch, I might get a request to get my money reimbursed to pay for that lunch. So, you know, everybody who's on the board, we do this because we love our community. We're here for the business community. And the only way, um, like Ariel was asking, she said that she's hopefully going to join the chamber. And, and I hope you will. That's our only income, is a membership. And we do a lot for the St. Croix community. And the chamber is very important, plays a very important role. Because we're a liaison between mm -hmm. the private sector and government. So, you know, please join the chamber, come to our business after hours, come to Ribbon Cuttings and do the support for the new businesses that are opening up. Um, I know we're going to have uh, one coming up pretty soon, and I think this is a government agency. Uh, I don't know the exact date, because I'm not in that committee. Uh, but I do know we'll get the chicken shack. And uh, typically, most of our events, I would like to say, 85% of our events are very well attended. Uh, the last one we had was um, at Bank of St. Croix with uh, Union, Philippi Union, which is part of Bank of St. Croix. And that was very well attended. How many members do you have right now? Currently, it's under 120. Okay. Um, we were as much of upwards of 200 plus members prior to that. We finally closed down and lost membership, obviously. We lost a lot of our big corporate sponsors. Uh, events, uh, Live Tree is uh, one of our members. Mm -hmm. But then you also had all the little ones in between, right. all the smaller companies. But uh, remember, when the refinery shut down, we lost close to about 10,000 people on the island. Wow, that much? Yeah. That's amazing. And there was uh, a statistic report that there were over, it's been a while now, out of fifteen to 1,800 vehicles that left St. Croix. So just to tell you, the amount of vehicles left St. Croix. At that point, at that time, I also had the like, Lewis Super Automotive. And we lost the Covenza. I also lost 70% of the vehicles that were coming to the shop. So it was a way that now we had to restructure, we had to adjust. And I had 27 employees. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to let go of 27 employees. 
because they also have families mm -hmm. a little more sophie yeah. and it hurts you know it hurt me yeah. to start laying people off i kept them as long as i could so, yeah keeping us on our toes the um when you were talking about in 2008 2009 when we had that recession it was it Put a big dent in businesses, but I did see just like now new businesses coming up. And actually, that's when I opened my business. I worked in a I was working in a business. Gave myself my time to live up here, and I thought, I'm going to go to the Oh, Ari, don't do that. You'll never be, it'll never work. Stay here in a stable job, you know. Well, then, so close. I had my little store, and Seven years back later, back. It's still there. It's still oh. here. And I'm um, feeling so grateful, but using that opportunity because there was open space. It's like the weeds had gone, just like mm -hmm. this storm. It's cleared out so much. Who's here can really focus, and, and there's more opportunities in buildings mm -hmm. and locations and money and people that actually want to be here. And that's what I love about these storms is that who's here? They really want to be here. They really want to be here. The same pace as I've been saying for years and years. And um, so we are building back, and that's that's awesome. So I, I imagine your your um, membership will go up. Yes, yeah, so and we're working on that. Um, we have a uh, we have a brand new committee. Uh, the chair for that committee is Leon Hughes, mm -hmm. uh, for Nerex uh, LLC. He's also in the. Uh, he was in the RT Park, but now they, they moved him, so he's got a place down in Christianstead. And uh, he's chairing the membership drive committee. And he came up to me um, right after the annual meeting, and we had our board meeting. And he said, Mr. President, I'm going to get you a 10% increase in the next 90 days. That's my goal. So um, I've seen a couple new memberships coming in. And it's definitely a plus. And like I said, you know, the, the chamber, with the community's help will grow, mm -hmm. and we are able to do more. One of the things we're trying to do right now is uh, either hire an executive director or an administrative assistant. Um, this will take, that's your paying job, but that will alleviate some of our duties to the chamber. And now we can delegate and say, Ariella, okay, now, since you're executive director, um, do the research for me on this new bill that the legislature wants us to do uh, testifying. Versus now, I'm up at 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> you know, doing this and have to wake up at 6 o'clock and mm -hmm. get the kids ready for school and breakfast. and So it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. How about volunteerism? Can't, can't underestimate it. Can't underestimate it. And I, I want to just uh, make a connection that you said something, and, and some people ought to automatically make the connection, but the, ch the chamber will grow. What we're really talking about is growing business, business. here in the Virgin Islands, St. Croix in particular. Mm -hmm. And with the growth of business, we're talking about the new dollars if we do it. Correct. Because we got to stop chasing the same dollar around and around and around. Bringing business in a way that needs new dollars to circulate, and uh, that's all under the, the program, I'm sure, of the, the goals and objectives of the chamber and the process. So that's I right. just wanted to say that in terms of making the connection, folks. Uh, from my perspective, when I look at the chamber, I see an organization that's not for itself. By its nature, it's to grow the company. Right. Uh, you know, I, I look at uh, when. We have folks like the Rotary, and we have a, a function, and we are asking for people to participate. And so we got to get involved because, in the end, what we support you. Right. Much more beyond what we give, because they have their other uh, sources of, of raising revenue and and bringing it back to the community. But it's really about the community. Another challenge is the uh, the American Cancer Society folks here. I tell folks that the fight against cancer is a fight for you. Exactly. It's not to make a for business. Benefit, and no, a, exactly. No, no, no. In the same way, uh, 
the, the, the chamber has a, a goal for the community, and it's not necessarily self-centered. Yes, right. they have an interest. Mm -hmm. you know, as a business person, I know you better have an interest. Yeah. No, no, but, but, but like for instance, I personally have been a member of the chamber for about 21 years. I've been on and off the board for roughly about 18 years here because you're only allowed to serve two consecutive three year terms. Then you come out and they usually always call me back. I'm one of the ones that always pushes, one of the ones that's pretty much always involved. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the American Society and, uh, uh, and the other one. The St. Croix Chamber also gives back to the community. We have scholarship funds. We have one for high school students, one for undergraduate, go to college. And then we also have one for college students, uh, which we give them. Uh, yeah. Well, I know that you, you publish the requirements for those scholarships and you probably do a press release and kind of out once again. With those type of things, I want to plug WSBX as the community mining station. Make sure that we know about it, especially for the presentations, because we want the community to know the ways in which these organizations are giving money to the community. Right. Uh, when, when I got involved with this, with this show, and the theme was to talk about people and organizations that are doing positive things here in the community. Anyhow, folks, uh, we got a lot of business going on here in Frederickstead. That's right. Uh, I got on my I love Frederickstead shirt. Okay, so we're going to take a, a break here in a minute. I'm going to check in with my station. Okay, folks, welcome back to WSTX, your community minded station here with our reflections. Yeah, with Doug Canton. You know him, that silly guy sometimes, serious guy. So you got to think for bridges. He always looking for the negative side to cross over to the positive. Hey, that's the way it is. And that's what it is. That's the way it is. You got problems in life. Problems are meant to be solved. In fact, it's like a coin. If you see the problem side, know that the job is flipped over and the solution is on the other side. There's no problem. It's life. It's life. Like, yeah. It's fantastic. You know, I tell people all the time, what problem you have that they need to have? It may not work out how you want it to, yeah. or when you want it to, but it always works out. Or it's done working out. That's right. So <laughs> I just want to transition, and we have a, a, another guest joining us but before I really take off on the back. Just want to remind everybody that we're here in Frederickstead, and we're here at C1A. All right. Yes. I learned the day before yesterday what it made me is in French. No bones, and hey folks, the food is just that good. If we got bones in it, hey, somebody gonna be here trying to explain where they went. Hey, well, right. the food is good. <laughs> the food is hey, good. Sorry, that's off the chart. Hey. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When you come in, you have the nice ambiance of kind of like a old time uh, stone house with the, the, the wooden roof and the rafters and everything. Friday, government because that's such a positive word and the government is supposed to be a partnership with the people and the more that we as a community look at government as something that they're always doing bad or looking at them always with the worst of intentions we're going to get that result and what I'm hearing today meeting you and listening to the conversation is that um, 
you're bringing positivity to it. And it's possible that the government, it can work in a holistic, healthy way for our community. And the more that we start hearing about these things and learning about them, then it would just, you know, bring that much more positivity to future businesses and current businesses that they seek that kind of assistance instead of just, no, I don't want anything to do with them. So I really appreciate that, and hopefully we can start to use more language that are there. And I'm sure they want to do that in some, in a lot of cases. Um, maybe we're not giving them a chance, you know, in that kind of a mindset. Well, you gotta remember, we are giving the government a chance because we elected them. Right. So, but now they have to work for us. Right. And that's one of the positives that, like, I like, I like to use the word partnership the be a liaison yeah. with this commission of government. And one of the things is, you know, the board of the chain was very diverse. You know, we have a whites, we have a blacks, we have a Hispanics, we have a mix. So it's a melting pot. There's not just cruise of people there, not just stateside people there, it's everyone. We're all there. And like I say, we do this for the benefit of the community. So, yeah, but we're here to help. We're here for sure, for sure, for sure. Thanks. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, did you want to say? I was going to say, just in closing, so we can get on yeah. with the shade. Um, you know, thank you, WSTX, and uh, we also want to ask the uh, listening to the audience to join St. Croix Chamber of Commerce. Help us grow so we can help St. Croix grow, help the business and community go forward. Uh, and it's all one. You know, we all can become one, one bigger voice, as well as strong power. Our, uh, our website is uh, www.stxchamber.org. If you type, you know, St. Croix Chamber on Google, it comes up. Uh, we're also on Facebook, on uh, social medias uh, throughout. And uh, also, you become a member, if you just pick. It's a regular package. You got our mailing list and all that, um, and we advertise your whatever you know, you have. But if you get like the premium package, which is not much more, uh, then you can actually get free advertising. So that's one of the things that we have it on our calendar. Uh, we try to promote everything on our calendar of events. So. Okay, what I look forward to to uh, WSPS is cementing and making the tighter that connection with the chamber for uh, for the public about that piece of information. Right? I want to welcome you. Relatively. Yeah, since November 1st. Yeah, yeah. Can you from where we have just like this. We have this brand new place in Frederickstead, right on the waterfront. You guys took over. Uh, Turtles after the dark. Turtles after the dark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were just there. Just had dinner there last week. Friday, the big group. That's right, man. Yeah. Look at that loud group of the Sonics there. Yes. Yeah. 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 The tacos, the fish taco, without the char, we get a little bit of everything. Your uh, quesadilla, the shrimp quesadilla. Yeah. Uh, was that the night for? Mm -hmm. um, no, no. The tacos is all choice tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know. Different. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mentioned Turtles Daddy, but I didn't know it changed names. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Turtles Daddy is still there. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just turns out the dark now is it's Lori and not just. Ah, okay, got it. So, so yeah, folks. I will say it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> we got a couple of some endorsement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's for sure. sure. And he also promised me he's going to join the chamber, so we're going to have a profession ribbon cutting here coming up. So, and I asked him now putting him on the spot. No, 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 how long have you been open? Uh, for two and a half months, <laughs> <laughs> roughly. Maybe a little more than two months. We'll be operational. The kitchen, the bar, uh, everything else. It's been great. It's been great. The, the community here, um, it's, they've just been so welcoming and so nice. It's, it's really it's refreshing. You know, it's, it's uh, coming from the hustle and bustle of Washington, D.C., and New York, and coming down here where everyone's just so 
open and just, you know, just embrace you and then it's just, it's, it's really refreshing. And the art pool, whenever I had a class and I was late, the art pool was the way to get there the quickest. But you gotta know what you're doing. Oh, you really do. You really do. You really do. And then, you know, I'm saying that I, I was best and never had an accident or anything else. It's, it's really quick to get where you want to go, but you better know what you're doing. Pictures of your life. Just yeah, exactly. And that's why I say now when I go back. Bus. Right, right, right. Train. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's just been, it, it, like I said, it's just been fantastic. And it's, it's just getting better. Um, we're just meeting more and more people here. More and more businesses here um, have been just reaching out to us. And um, well, like, we love food here. Yeah. And we love new things. You know, I guess that's part of being on an island. Just anything new is, is so welcome. It's so exciting. Sure. <laughs> And um, to have a business like, yeah, we really hope that you stay. And, you know, we're excited. We're extremely excited. Because I, I'm looking at, I've been here, a bartender longer than I have. I've been here since November, but I'm excited to just be growing. Since I've been here and I have office as well. It's just, we just have. Yeah, is this something that you did in DC? My partner did in DC. He had a place to work 10 years in DC, Northern Virginia. Um, that was great, it was fantastic, and um, he just he wanted to come down here and, and try it out down here. And, you know, I, I I knew him up in DC. I was friends with him in DC. I saw how well he did in DC with with his place there, and I just embraced it down here. And I see it, you know, it transferred over nicely down here. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And what he had to his staff, the way staff was excellent. I mean, thank you. Thank serving, you. I think it was maybe 14 or 15 of us, and everyone with a different mindset. And they go to this, oh, let me take my mind. Uh, and your staff is excellent. Thank you. You know, thank you so, so much. Yeah. yeah. They, they're, they're great. They're great. They're great. They're great. They're great. They're great. I remember your group was a lot of fun. Yeah, I was there with the whole. Wherever we go with this group, yeah, the loudest in the bunch, right? <laughs> and what's funny now that I remember is the day before, I don't know who came into uh, the reservation, but. They warned us like we're gonna be loud, we're gonna be having fun. Yeah, and exactly. Like, it was all right, yeah. You got yeah. the hockey yeah. table, you got this all. Yeah. And uh yeah, and, and the view, you know, the view's great and yeah, it's just it's you come there for the sunset and it's I was just gonna tell you that. It's, it's, yeah. it's people make reservations around sunset, have a nice cocktail and watch, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be my next question, you know, why Fred and Um we saw the opportunity here and the and the lack of food options here. Mm -hmm. in Frederick's said, there's just and I just I love the town. I I love the uniqueness of the town and I see just see the potential here in this town. And when my partner had come down previously and looked at a, a few different areas, few different spots, it just struck out of it. And when I came down, I was like right on, this is, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then we're, we have the Fred opening up right next door to us, which is just gonna... Oh, it's beautiful what they've done. Yeah, and it's just gonna be, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna really... Use one key word, opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Opportunity, yeah. folks. Fred right said it's full of opportunity. Full of opportunity. However you looked at it before, step away and come back to the highest Fred. Yeah. yeah. This opportunity here, in Frederick's head. And it, it's kind of sounding like maybe we need to do good morning, Frederick's head, from down here, make sure it goes something. Yeah, you know, absolutely, know. please. Yeah. That would be, be, be great. I mean, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, that one, man. Yeah. 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 Right, maybe you should come in the evening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be great. Maybe I can work with WSDX and maybe let somebody's program aside and we can get to the sunset now. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Love but uh, anything is possible. But definitely. So, um, you want to tell us? Sorry. Did you want to no, 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 no. I was going to say, you want to tell us your hours and anything we are open. you'd like them to know. We are open from 10, uh, from 11 to 10. Okay. Um, we are going to start serving brunch on Sundays soon. I think we're going to wait. Um, so that'll, our hours will be open an hour earlier. So, so seven days a week. Seven days a week we're open. Um, if you if you want to call uh, reservations, um, just stop by and I'll give, I'll give you the information. 
Um, we also take out, also take out. But if you need anything, what we do is we have been hosting parties as well. We've had a couple parties so far. It's uh, a nice big area. It is, it is. And please just come in. If you, if you have any questions at all, feel free. You have my name is Kevin J. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Even if it's off site, you know, we'd be happy to help you out. You can catering to them? We're, we're going to start, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right now, we're just trying to embrace, yeah, yeah, yeah. embrace the, the just dealing with the, the restaurant so but that's yeah and like i said people it, it's been great it, it's and uh, the feedback too has been fantastic which is i guess added to my excitement so, just, 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 uh, so i just i don't want please come no matter where you know it's you know i love it and it's, i think it was the, the view the just the environment Right. And uh, people make it a regular for sunset. It sounds like an environment. Every, yeah, it really is. And it's, it's we, we've had a lot of people come and visit. And and this wasn't the greatest thing when they come and visit. They're like, and they loved it. Right? You know, there's the, where they're staying on the west side. Um, they're just so happy that you know, other places are open. That more places are open. And they only wish that more. More. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's a town of opportunity. Yeah. In fact, do you have any advice or any experiences um, being so new setting up your business? Um, for maybe somebody listening who's thinking that maybe I could do this. Maybe first, that is a great place. Just you, just you come down here and just look at places. And, and, and look at, like we're saying, our opportunity. Just look and... This this town is, is is beautiful. It's a beautiful town, and it's just it just needs a little more people coming in to to kind of refresh it a little. And it's, people here are fantastic. People here are beautiful, and it's I would say just come in and just look at the potential of everything, the potential of the place, the potential of the, of, of the side. Potential of just being able to be there and how well you can do it. I, I, I think it's a no brainer for people to come down here and just really look at friends and really look at friends and really just. One of the things I want to add to that is come on in. Folks, you know we had a little problem with the road there between Frederick's Head and, and the, the highway, right? <coughs> They patch it up nice. Yeah. They patch it up. I was so impressed. Nice, nice, but I mean, it, 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 it turned out it, it, right. it, it was. Yes, yes, yes. So now it's a much smoother ride coming into Frederickstown. Thank you for whoever saw the light and said, "Hey, it's been time and let's do this." And because uh, now it, you can't have great uh, places and then a rough time to get there. You know. And which, by the way, um, maybe we can partner on, on uh, with, with these various parts of our government because as a chamber, you know, the seaplane has become a, a kind of a, a cover stop there in Christianstead. And it would be so nice if the various agencies could come up with a memorandum of understanding so we could get all the area paved and a road in and a, a different road out oh, in the right. process to, to facilitate what's going on down there. So I, I'm throwing that out to you as a chamber. Maybe it's something they already started discussing, but people notice, all right? Of course people notice. And anybody who's doing serious business in, in, in St. Croix, at some point in time, has to go through the seaplane. Mm -hmm. And you put your best foot forward. That's right. Help us to help, to help you, whether it's a chamber, government trying to raise revenues or whatever. When people come here, I tell them, you know, one of the experiences you should have is riding on the sea. Just to sure. take our process and the landing process. Yeah. They never say that yeah. But take our process and land process because it's like anywhere from people holding the handle real tight mm -hmm. <laughs> to saying, wow, this is great, you know. Um, but there's that other side of it. It's just like I saw an uh, article on Rome. Rome is one of the places that people go to visit, whatever, but they've been having a trash problem and seen a decline as a result. So this is why, you know, whether it's Virginia and Clean, clean Sweep Frederickstead and what she's doing or the community volunteerism 
for the government coming up with a way to beautify down here. It just makes sense. It's a no brainer. Right. So, anyhow, yeah. I'm really glad that you said that because I've been thinking about this as well, especially like Mahogany Road. I kept trying to think who right. would have a good interest in making sure this is well enough for taxi drivers and tourists. I thought maybe tourism would have an interest in, you know, pushing the paving of roads, especially in areas where taxis need to go and, you know, to create revenue on their side, but maybe it's Chamber of Commerce who we should be. Unfortunately, we're not in that to. department, but um, you touched a good point. The VA Tax Association, they're, they're the one need to come and complain Public works to patch that Mahogany Road. And you're right, that road is terrible. Would commerce help and support it? But of course, you know, yeah. the, somehow, some form or another, you know, we could make a voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll tell you right now, the Croy Chamber of Commerce pushes more for members than non members. Right. So if you're a non member, you try to think, well, come and help you with this, is like, Okay, sucker, you know, pay up and then, yeah. then, then we can help you, you know. Because yeah, one hand can't clap. No, I understand know? that. I so, understand you know. that. But there's certain things but, that we yeah. all have an interest no, in. No, exactly, that. exactly. And, and tourism is definitely a plus because we want this is to, to strike. It's not everything, but it is no, something. It's something, yeah. yeah. So, for sure, for sure. That's yeah, something that we, we can look into. Um, we do have, uh, I do have some connection with public works. Uh, not to the chamber, but, you know. So that we can make some phone calls and say, hey, you know. Well, we want to make the money. We have yeah. to create the environment to make the money. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about a convenience to an individual. Yeah. No. We're talking about something that's going to impact the, the, the economy, economy overall. Yeah. And, and that, that's why I mentioned that. I just came back. I know it's far away from Frederickstead. But a lot of times people get off and they see plane to drive down to drive down, yeah, 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 yeah. Stay, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things. It, it, it touches us all. Yeah. And it just came to, to my mind in that context. But folks, we're down here in Frederickstead. We're at Simone. You hear the cars going by, the trucks going by, the various business operations going on. Everybody's restocking or just opening up or Heading down the road to get to the FEMA or SBA down at the chamber building, Frederickstead is bustling. You go down on the waterfront and you, you go down at, by Polly's, and sure you're going to see a bunch of people coming and going, everybody getting their little breakfast and sitting down. Tigers and, uh, coming out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always something going on. You're not going to sit in the park and be bored. If you sit in the park, you're going to get a performance. Everybody doing their thing, coming and going from walking to the divers, to the going to, to Polly's or wherever around. So it's definitely something. It's beautiful, beautiful. And it, it, it's worth it sometimes just to, whether it's you're going to go to Point Duda or you're going to go to the, to the Frederickstead waterfront, you just sit away, observe, and, and take it in. Yeah, because people pay thousands of dollars to come to down come here, here just to stay for a while. We take it for granted most of the time. All right. Fantastic. All right. Well, it sounds like uh, we'll be checking out Louis and Nacho's suit. Please. Please. It sounds What's like a, a wonderful environment to uh, definitely have another show at. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, a quick so break. So, engineer, we're going to take a quick break here. And then we're going to make a, a swing around the corner down the street and back here to see Bonnet and talk about the ambiance, the place, the inspiration that brought us this beautiful place where WSDX, your community minded station, is broadcasting out of today. Welcome back to WSTX Reflections. Hopefully, you didn't have to come too far to get back to WSDX. As uh, so you know, we're here at Simone in Frederickstead. And if you didn't know where it is, you will know after today. And definitely, you have to come down and check it out. Come down and have a libation. Just on that way, head towards to relax. Come on down and listen to some jazz Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Come on down, enjoy the food. Come on down. Okay, because you would be surprised how much it would lift you up. <laughs> All right, and we're here 
with that. Uh, yeah, hey, I want you to yeah. kind of take over a little bit and, yeah. and tell us about your inspiration for getting into this business. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank um, WSCX's Mr. Canton for selecting C1A yeah, as a place for this forum with the chamber and ourselves. And um, from here on out, I'm going to call the website. Freedom City. Freedom City. And it's only fitting because we're right now we're sitting in a very historic building. Um, this building actually got burned down in the fire of 1878. Uh, it's been around a lot longer. Um, and um, there's a sign up on the wall here that um, well, the John Doug Storehouse from the shop in 1780. So there's a lot of history right here in this courtyard. Um, it's pretty much the original, the original grandeur. This, this structure has been here forever. It's just that. And um, C1A, originally we want to use the spelling C I B O N E Y, which was some of the original inhabitants before the Taino Indians in the Caribbean. Before aesthetics, we chose to, to um, spell it the French way with the accent over the E, which actually in Patois means yes, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so, we actually found that out after we created the site, so it worked out in our favor. So, but yeah, we're here um, at 67 King Street, which is two doors up from um, here 69. Um, we have a very eclectic menu. We have a simple menu, um, very nice cuisine. It's upscale, and um, I mean, we're here. You know, we have jazz on Fridays and Saturday evenings, and then for Sunday brunch on Sunday. It's 10 to 2. We open at 6 to 10 for dinner. Tuesday to Saturday, and then we do Sunday brunch um, on Sunday at 10 o'clock to 2, 2 p.m. Well, I tell you, I, uh, I, I came down here. I was drawn to this place by my cousin and musician, Lord Davis, yes. who Styles. is down here playing on Saturday. On Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And um, so that's how I discovered Sibonet. Of course, I always knew the place, but as I said earlier, Frederickstead is in, in a, a state of transformation. Yes, it is. So, the Frederickstead you knew last year isn't necessarily the Frederickstead that's here now. So, folks, take a walking tour. Yes, we have those too. Chant does walking tours, and not just for people off the cruise ship. Okay, we all can learn something. Thank about you. Frederick Yes, thank you for saying that. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's there for us. Okay, and so if you haven't had one of those walking tours, I would highly recommend that you do that just to learn more about Frederick Stead from a historical perspective. Right. Just like being here today. This is and again, you know, this day, day. Day. again, you know, I stress freedom city. Yeah. This is where you know, we, we got our freedom. Well, the VI yeah, happened right here in Frederick. So it, it's it's only it's only fitting in, in that sense that uh, people go and, and avail themselves of these yeah. walking tours and learn more about the history. Can I say that, folks? It's not all about the classroom. In fact, life is the classroom when you think about it. Don't limit yourself to the a building and a teacher. And the, okay, there's so much to learn about the Frederick. Go to the book and get out there. Exactly. I so remember uh, years ago, many, many years ago, uh, we had the Vickers family that were here in Frederickstead. And I remember my mom would be coming down here and bring us some time to see Granny Vickers. I remember that name. I'll never forget that name. And because uh, and I, I could tell my mom loved her, like special, special, special. So when she passed, I had to say, the grieving process, I could tell, you could you know, see when somebody been so attached and everything else. But that was part of the, the attachment. Of course, we have um, Joe Simpson. That's that's my, uh, my new grandfather. Right? Yeah. Him and Freddie yeah. My mom is from Freddie yeah. Simpson family. So, Style, uh, Arnold, all of these folks. So, you know, it's it's a plenty of connection. Plenty of connection. So, I tell people, don't be too quick to cut it. Don't be too quick to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, in terms of as an entrepreneur and a, and a business person, was it always your goal or desire to 
open up a restaurant or, or how, how did it come to you? But growing up, you know, my parents, um, Elaine and Russell, they made sure that we had they they scrape sometimes to make sure that we got exposed to different things in life. I always liked the restaurant scene. One of the first places I loved was Via Morales. It's one of the first restaurants I remember going to. Um, where Louis and I took you know, it first started up in Swatch Buckler. I mean, my father made sure to me, you know, that we visited Swatch Buckler and we even if we had just sat down and had a drink too much. Um, then there was a child house. So we would leave wow. Frederick Center and go all the way to child house. Yeah. And, I, and I, I always enjoyed that experience. I always enjoyed the treatment. I always enjoyed the service. So it's always been something in the back of my mind. I said, oh, you When this place was on San Tropez, I was you know, older. I was in exposed to I was in my team. I used to come here and I always said, then, I'm going to this place. I said, I said, when I was old enough to sit in the front, I would sit back home. And I always said, I want this place. Um, this is not my first restaurant. I was actually located where Louis and Nacho lived. It was my first restaurant. And with mahogany by the sea. Myself and the sea. We had mahogany by the sea. So that was my first exposure to the business. I liked it. Learned a lot from that first experience. Applied what I learned here. And I've been here since December 31st, 2016. I see now, I, I'm so glad you took the time out to do all of that because right now I'm working on a documentary with uh, King Bobby. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how much history and stories are coming out. And when they come out in front of the, the camera or the recording device, whatever it may be, it's an opportunity then to have it as a legacy to the future so people can know. Because just by coming in here and sitting down, the things that I've learned about this building, about uh, uh, names that you call, whether it's Swahili Buckler or, or uh, Mahogany by the Sea or whatever, and it's like, okay, I know of those places, I didn't go there, but the other thing that I'm missing is that from a cultural perspective, I really admire what, what your parents did in terms of the exposure. Uh, because some of the various stores you may go to here. Uh, people know that they see younger children behind the cash register and doing it. It's not for lack of labor as much so as the parents want the children to know right, right. what it takes to run this business right. that buys your iPhone and buys your iPad and all this other stuff. And, and then through that appreciation, you have a tendency to be more thoughtful right. about how you, how you handle your resources. It's something that has a lot of Positive, but, um, but yeah, I just say that when I came in here uh, last Saturday before last uh, and sat down and watched the music, I want to tell people when you come here, you just never know who you might meet. Okay, you never know who you might meet, and I say that uh, you, you're gonna see people here sitting down and the lounge chairs and everything and some of them just have this tendency to want to bring their own microphone and set up uh, so that they could <laughs> sit in with the jazz band uh -huh. all right and uh, as i'm saying that there you're going to be seeing it in your mind and soon you'll be seeing it on the screen but this is what it is a down to earth place oh, definitely. Definitely. Down -to -earth. Definitely. entertainment good food camaraderie and I say that you had guests who were here, and when, when they left, they just had to say something. They enjoyed themselves. So I really felt blessed to be here to see that. Right, right, Folks, right. people appreciate this place and this island. Thank you. Okay, so we thank you for what we you do. We appreciate that. We Definitely. appreciate that. And you've made the sacrifice, because running a business, especially one in, in the area of uh, food, because you, there's so many things that impact you. Cost of eggs going up, the cost of milk going up, the cost of any kind of meat. This past week, we just had a uh, cargo ship that brings in the supplies, frozen supplies for the for the merchants, for quality, for Plaza of God's best breakdown in the ocean. So that's another you know aspect that you have to deal with. That was new to quality as well, but we went to the grocery stores and all the shelves. 
the, the consumer didn't realize that because there's a one ship, one new ship out there that, that just broke down, the refrigeration broke down, and it had to be towed. So. I'm really happy that you're mentioning that, because um, when I heard that happening, I thought, you know what, there's a blessing in everything, and that's a reality that we have here. If the container breaks down, there's no food coming here. Right. So, um, this is awesome. As a restaurant owner, is there anything that you're thinking maybe I should do as far as helping out your own garden? That too. In case that too. Um, and. Happens. You know, when I first started out, and we get back to that slowly, we worked a lot with the local farmers. And we just created a menu based on what they would bring in. And so we worked a lot. We worked with Sage Farms, we worked with um, Rich Tariq, and a couple other local small farmers. And they would bring in their produce, and we'd go, all right, let's create a soup out of this. You know, and when we had, um, like, Chef Ballet, a friend of yours, and he was good at that, he also brought in his own produce as well. So unfortunately, he was displaced by Maria and so. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And we've had, you know, fresh uh, protein, fresh meat from local farmers as well. Okay. We get fish delivered to us the day of, and we create a menu. So we usually have like six or seven entrees, a couple of appetizers, a couple of things change daily. So we're trying to work on a basic menu. Feeling out the things that people really love, and we're gonna make this thing. Well, I'm so glad that everything just happened to fall in place. So we're here on a Tuesday morning, relaxing and see what they know. This is now when they normally open, but they open for us. The doors to you to hear and other people in the community as well as to find out more about Sydney. So come on down. Check us out. Why, if you have anything out of the ordinary going on in that context, want something different to do? Come and see what it is. Here, if you have something special going on, maybe a special guest come down, somebody special come to do some vocals or something right, right. like that. Let us know. We'll talk about it. That's the thing. Sometimes you just have to be here because yeah. I don't know who's going to walk in that door. We yeah. may have a trumpetist or violinist <laughs> or um, someone on the flute. He makes his own flute. He came in the other night and came here with the band. Oh, we had an improvised drummer the other yeah. day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. You never know. We welcome it. Sometimes we grab the songsters in the, in the dining area. It's, you know, she make them with the Can I get this mic? And you just blow your way. You won't believe it. We had a, um, a guy that sings in um, in shows, musicals, and operas, and what have you. Here two weeks ago, so he came in and blew the, I mean, blew everybody away. People were like, "Is he on a microphone?" No, <laughs> no, no that's <laughs> so, yeah. the voice. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, definitely. So, folks, this is an experience, not a restaurant. It's an experience. Come on out. It's an experience. Okay. You think you're gonna come here next Saturday and see what was here last Saturday? Chances are not you're gonna see something diverse and different, mm -hmm. but still complementary to the ambiance and the experience. You can come down and just enjoy a, a glass of wine and some appetizers. Come. Well, I wanted to extend my thanks on behalf of WSBX for helping us to do what we do. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.